Uh, hey everybody, today's video, one of my favorites again, is the Square D Motor Starter. Uh, we've got a couple of different ones here, but today we're going to look primarily at the size 2, and we're going to look at the contacts inside, we're going to look at some maintenance points to hopefully help you if you're doing, maybe the young guys out there doing maintenance need a little help, uh, we'll take a look at those and show you a little about those. Let's, look, let's go ahead and jump into these. As I said, we've got a couple of different ones today. We've got our size three, which you see the size three right here. A good durable starter up to 90 amps. We'll set him to the side. We've got another one that's a size four. He's a big boy right there. A lot larger, 135 amps at 480 or 600 volt. But today we want to primarily work on this small, easy to work on one. We want to look in there and kind of show you about the contacts inside. Give you a little bit about the verbiage on that you're going to have a moving contact and a stationary contact both of those will be mated together so let's loosen our wires up get it ready to pull the head off of this thing let's put some glasses on we can see what we're doing get it loosened up loosen your wire retainers there this is going to be straight off of your coil that's inside the head here loosen those up we've already loosened up your screws you got two of them in the corner here spin it a little bit make sure it's not dragging now we want to pull the head completely off of this set that one to the side we'll look at the contacts inside right here and i'll show you something a little bit different about these pull two we've got already, already got them pulled out to the side i've got you'll notice that these two are a different shape one's got a hard bend in it like this i want to make sure when you're going back in with them that this bent one you'll see that it goes in what we call the line side or the top of the starter it's going to be in the very top up here so just pay close attention to that as we're taking them out to do a little cleaning some of these guys you can leave inside of the body this is what we call the body of the starter right here this plastic housing on this open mouth one here you can you could leave these in to service them but say you had to you had a burnt one so bad that you had to take it and remove it we would take that let's go ahead and do that say it was so burned you had to replace the contact kit which we can provide you with the contact kits if you need those just make sure you got the style and the size we can help you with that but the point of this video really is just to show you how to extend the life of these in other words during a shutdown or a planned outage you would go through and you'd cycle all your breakers off and you'd, you'd pull the head off your starter and then you would look at this contact right here you see how it's got just a little bit of arcing right there that's not bad that's not pitted real bad so we'll take it set it up grab you a little bit of scotch bright some guys keep like an emery board in their tool bag you can just reach down inside of there a little easier and clean them up so we'll scuff that one up a little bit it's little stuff like this that can extend the life because most of you know it but if we didn't address that little bit of arcing and we just let it continue on and continue on that would eventually build heat and then that heat would begin to deteriorate the contact tip and then it would just eventually break down so this can help extend the life when you do your preventive maintenance so this one's not super bad what you want to look at in the face of that silver see how there's a little bit of etching right there that might require a little bit more aggressive grinding or sanding than this maybe a little bit tougher grit sandpaper and you could take that little bit of pitting out not rocket science but just good little facts to know so again the shape of this one and the shape of the one we're going to pull out here this is your these two will actually be your maintained contacts these don't move you can see the shape of them we'll put them side by side the shape of them right there they don't move they stay in the body of it on the body of the starter let's clean him a little bit leave your screws in there get him clean and scuffed up a little bit again this one could probably use a little bit more aggressive uh, grit sandpaper there just to cut that just a little bit you don't want to get too deep into it if you, if you start putting them like with a belt sander which is a little aggressive you start doing that then you you make this silver pad you make the surface uneven if you make that uneven and you have three of these and the moving contacts come down these moving contacts come down and actually push against and made across your other contacts you're going to have an uneven surface and you're going to begin to get some some vibration and some some noise in there 
That also will build heat. Again, heat's a bad thing. So let's look at the, the mating contacts or the moving contacts. You can see that we've got them flipped upside down, but these would actually fit right down in here once it was inverted. That's when you have that offset because it clears this arc chute right here. This kind of helps with your, any arcing that you have. So it'd be, this is the relationship that they have. So set those aside. You can typically, you want to take these out, but you can lightly hit these guys. Sand them a little bit. Get them cleaned up. You'll want to be a little more thorough than that, but for the sake of the video, just to give you the illustration, these will pop out have to be real careful when you go back in that little spring right there you see it there's a spring and that spring is what gives it that return once it engages against the maintain contacts that puts firm pressure and helps back it up to where you have a good surface connection there so pull the one out we won't pull all three of these out just for the sake of time but just to give you a good visual clean those up get them ready to go again you know, that one's not bad, but it's not the best either. So we would work on that a little bit more aggressively. So when you go back in with these guys, let me just show you this one here real quick. Because sometimes you can get stumped up. If this little spring, when you go back in with your moving one, you want to make sure that there's a little divot in the back. See that little pin right there, a little right raised up section. That's going to ride in the spring itself. So if we go in with it, Sometimes they can be a little tricky. You'll make sure that you get them inside that spring correctly. So, you want to mount. You don't want to flop like that. You want to be stationary. So it'll run. you'll know it. It'll be just like that right there. So as we do that, sometimes you'll also inspect this guy. You, sometimes you'll have one of these that'll start getting hot or start getting some heat transfer and it'll get weak and it'll begin to collapse on you. So that can be an issue. So always inspect those guys as well. Let's set him over there. Go back to this guy on the body. Now, we're gonna get a little deeper in a couple of our other videos, uh, but on this particular one, these are simple maintenance points that, you know, if you've got a little bit of maintenance experience, obviously you wanna de-energize it. You do wanna pull it out of the equipment, out of the motor control center bucket or the standalone starter enclosure. You wanna pull that out and do that service maybe at a desktop. It can be done in in the, in the container or in the enclosure, but you have to be ex use extreme caution that you don't have control power still on it for your coil, because that could be a problem. In there cleaning the way and all of a sudden you get hit and bit. So just be aware of that. Always get rid of and isolate your control power. Um, on our next video, I want to just touch on this before we leave out. These little heaters right here. In our next video, I'll pop one out just to make it real simple, but we'll have a link there in our video, this video, well, you can actually go to this next one upcoming. You'll see, we'll talk a little bit more about sizing the heaters, these overload heaters, we call them OLs, overloads. We're gonna size these according to the numbers that are on them. And then we're gonna explain a little bit more about the operation and how they actually work to protect your circuit. So hopefully this has been helpful for you maintenance guys out there. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below or just reach out to us here at Electrical Power and Control. Thanks as always, God bless.